interactivity, the exchange of information between two entities. Typically thought of as real-time two-way communication. It can be traced back to the very first forms of communication itself, and perhaps even farther. What, then, is the future of interactivity today? In order to predict the future, one often draws a reference point between the present and the past. Thus given factors are chosen and up to two points on a graph, allowing gesticulation of data that may represent a future point. Such a graph could be used to determine specific numbers in relation to the point, resulting in decimals and integers. But instead, let's examine a general sense of how we communicate, and how it is changing. There can be no doubt that technological developments have changed the way that we interact with each other. In the modern world, examples may be found all around us. We have been born into an already changing world. Let us first examine some developments that brought us here. Late 15th century, the popularization of the printing press. The written word becomes mass-producible, and therefore subject to widespread distribution. Its presence heralds major social change, ultimately leading to the birth of the middle class. New forms of political systems spring up and compete, culminating in two world wars before dying out in a long and covert conflict. The monopolization of global resources proves more applicable to global leadership than ideological differences. You get up on your little 21-inch screen and howl about America and democracy. There is no America. There is no democracy. There is only IBM and ITT and AT&T and DuPont, Dow, Union Carbide and Exxon. Those are the nations of the world today. What do you think the Russians talk about in their councils of state? Karl Marx? They get out their linear programming charts, statistical decision theories, min and max solutions, and compute the price cost probabilities of their transactions and investments, just like we do. We no longer live in a world of nations and ideologies, Mr. Beale. The world is a college of corporations, inexorably determined by the immutable bylaws of business. The world is a business, Mr. Beale. It has been since man crawled out of the slime. Late 20th century, the interweb becomes available to the public. Live text, then video communication is possible all over the globe. Early 21st century, the business and scope of culture has been significantly influenced by free exchange of information and entertainment online. Online communication is used in social or economic class revolutions throughout many parts of the world. Internet-based devices take up an increasing percentage of human business and cultural activities. Where will we go from here? Many theorists have predicted an increasing level of artificial intelligence, and there can be no doubt that we rely on more computers to perform important tasks daily. As we become more used to communicating with machines, our communication with each other will surely become more machine-like. When we interact with strangers their status as machine or human will cease to matter. Communicating between friends will flourish due to the categorization of online groups and the ability to easily find like-minded people, no matter how freaky. Yet the integrity of bonds formulated by similar interests will diminish, as it becomes the only way to meet new people. A catalog of digitized culture will make new entertainment difficult to manufacture. With time many humans will desire separation from a community that is so interconnected and personalized. Suicide and cult communities will see a brief spike. Soon after, cyborg implants and drugs imposed by the majority of society will swiftly cure these ills. In less than 100 years no biological human beings will exist.